Hey, I'm Elizabeth Stark, and you are watching Tech Cocktail. Tech Cocktail Conversations, candid insights from startup founders, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders from around the globe. Sure. So, hey, I'm Elizabeth Stark. I am currently an entrepreneur in residence at Stanford Startex. We are Stanford's entrepreneurial community, bringing together the founders from across Stanford University and beyond. I also previously taught at Stanford and Yale about the future of the internet, and I'm really passionate about the open web. I was not around at the time, but uh, the founder of Startex, Cam, has a really interesting story um, in which he himself was an entrepreneur. And he saw in, you know, Stanford's known to be one of the best places for entrepreneurship, like Google, all sorts of companies have come out of there. And yet he still felt that his, ne his needs were not being met. So what he did was in a span of three weeks, he went out and interviewed 120 different companies. And I even said to him, like, how did you sleep during those three weeks? And he found out what the needs were of these companies and decided to pretty much just do it on his own. So initially when he started Stardex, it was a little bit over two years ago, there was significant pushback from the university. Um, often when things are top down and when things are run by the administration, they have a very different feel. So for example, um, at one point, one university administrator actually emailed a whole set of students saying, do not apply to Stardex, you know, that we don't sanction this. And yet, because he was entrepreneurial himself and went against the grain, um, he created a peer-based community of passionate entrepreneurs that now has expanded and become a really strong network of people. And we're, we actually recently got a grant for $800,000 from the Kauffman Foundation to expand our uh, program beyond Stanford, so to other universities and other communities as well. We're a nonprofit. We take no equity. Um, so we are here to serve the entrepreneur. Um, lots of folks will be in something like Y Combinator and Stardex. That's totally fine with us. We have a physical space, um, so all of our companies actually work inside of our space. And as an entrepreneur in residence, I help to advise and mentor those companies, and I'm working on my own thing there as well. But talking about the um, importance of collisions, well, when you're all in a big room, you just happen to run across people that have you know, some advice or help for what you're doing, and um, there's significant opportunities for being in that place. Um, we also we do have the university affiliation. But we have a lot of companies that have non-Stanford. So at least one founder right now has to be from Stanford. But lots, lots of amazing folks in our community have come from elsewhere as well. Again, I was not there at the beginning. But um, I believe for this past session, we had something like 150 companies apply, which is huge and incredible. And Stanford, again, is a place where it's funny. I came from the East Coast. At Yale, where I taught, most students weren't really thinking about startups. And then at Stanford, everyone wants to start a startup. Um, so things have really exploded. Um, we've had so many amazing uh, companies apply that we actually recently started a new program for emerging entrepreneurs to get mentorship and to be involved in our community and then hopefully then go along to become a Startex founder as well. So, Initially, uh, Startex was called the Stanford Student Startup Accelerator, but we actually have a huge diversity of founders. So we have faculty members like myself. Uh, we have PhD students. We have researchers. We have alums. So I believe we accept people within at least four years of graduating from Stanford. Um, we have grad students and undergrads and everything in between. So really anyone from the community. And we have a whole diversity of companies as well. So we actually have a med program. Now granted, that's not my specialty. I'm much more tech web oriented. Um, but we have some amazing companies in that program developing things, life changing technologies. On the medical side, we have hardware companies, we have education companies, we have enterprise, consumer web, and lots of things in between. Oh wow. Um, so a few things that I think we're seeing right now is a push more towards solving real problems. So for a while, uh, there was kind of a frenzy in Silicon Valley around the next photo sharing app and Instagram was you know, acquired for a billion dollars and so on. But now I think we're seeing a shift away from everybody creating another photo sharing app. Now, sure, some people have problems around photo sharing. But the shift is more toward looking at what are real problems that people are facing and how can we build technologies that will substantially address those problems and have an impact on the world. Um, another thing I hope that we'll see is more of the focus on um, not just making revenue or making money, but doing so and creating value in a way that brings impact and change to the world. And that's one thing that I see um, essential to the Silicon Valley ethos as well, certainly amongst my community. Um, I also think we'll see a trend more toward interconnectedness. 
So right now, um, people are getting frustrated with things along the lines of walled gardens or you know, sites like Facebook dictating what users can and cannot do. So um, a push toward technologies where people can interact with the technologies and more open APIs and more means to interconnect via technologies that are being built.